What's up YouTube, this is Fate bringing you another deck profile today, and today we're going to be showing you uh, more of a different take on uh, dragons. For lack of name originality, I'm going to call this uh, my uh, toolbox dragon deck. I used to play dragons a certain way when I was a lot younger. Everybody's seen my mythic dragon rulers uh, by now, so I figured I'd combine some of the old, some of the new, try out some of those strategies in the game today, and without further ado, let's get to the profile. To start things off, Blaster, Tidal, Tempest, and Redox, standard uh, dragon lineup. Then for part one of the old, I play triple Quackimiru Dragos. Considering uh, how the format's uh, developing today with uh, Burning Abyss, Shadows, Stellar Knights uh, starting to come up out of the ward work, I want to get uh, these uh, Quackimura Dragos back into the game. Uh, they have plenty of control over uh, light and dark special summons. And uh, having a 19 beater dragon to, again and a second uh, search target for Tempest is fantastic. Another theme with the old, I'll play Triple Mass Dragon. It also seems like that uh, against some certain builds, uh, being destroyed by battle is starting to become a little more prevalent again. So these uh, have been gained a lot more play lately. And uh, not only does Blaster work well or with uh, Mass Dragons and send off his ability, Mass Dragons also have uh, plenty of uh, search slash special summon targets in the build. Two of which, two Mythic Tree Dragons, and two Mythic Waters. Unlike my Mythic Rulers, uh, where I uh, like to go a little more rank 8 heavy, the way this build uh, revolves can't do that as much, but still two of each of these guys gets me into my Felgram play, and it forces the opponent to use uh, resources up when I get onto my bigger plays later in the game. Another mass dragon target, two flamval guards, works with dragon shrine, pretty standard. Then as an oddball choice, I decide to play two delta flyers. This is more testing out my old uh, favorite uh, dragon tuner again, and more in preparations if they ever do uh, get to that whole debris dragon rather uh, confirmed. Uh, but uh, until then, I'm testing these guys already. So far, they are working extremely well with the build, able to level manipulate and get onto a more diverse range of uh, synchro plays. So these guys have been uh, showing their worth once again for me. And the last of the Mass Dragon targets, one Exploder Dragon, ram into your opponent, set as a trap uh, when they run into it, destroy something you don't like. And for uh, the other sort of oddball play with this build, I play one Eclipse Wyvern. Plenty of uh, removability with the Blaster, Tidal, Tempest, and Redox. And uh, for the removal targets to set off Eclipse Wyvern, we run one Light and Darkness Dragon. And one uh, Red Eyes Dark Spall Dragon. That's it for the monster lineup, and for the monster lineup, the, I would have to say the only card I'm missing out of this is a single copy of Totem Dragon, but for some reason that has become harder and harder to find uh, where I go to locals. On to the spells. I've checked in the two uh, Diamond Core of uh, Quacky Mirrors. reason why I put in the two Rotas uh, just for my uh, one uh, Drago there, because of the control against the uh, Light and Dark is getting more prevalent. I like uh, setting up Kuekimiru turn 1 as much as possible so they use resources right off the bat to work around the guy before they can even get into their special summon place and usually them using those resources up right off the bat determines where you can kill uh, their new boss monster that much more quickly or uh, how much it sets you up uh, for the rest of the game. That and this guy's protect effect keeps uh, Drago on the board a little longer if it's your turn. Two uh, Dragon Shrines and uh, one Teched in uh, Foolish Burial. Pretty standard set for the Foolish Burial. Actually, I'm running out of copies of Dragon Shrines, so 
If you're thinking about building this, three Dragon Shrines is better than two Dragon Shrines in Foolish Burial, but it hasn't slowed this build down too much yet. Two Mystical Space Typhoons. Then for the one ofs, I run one Gold Shark. Easy search with the E Dragons, plenty of search targets. Burial from the different dimension, recycle. Soul Charge. N couldn't really fit more than the one in here, but having at least the one uh, Soul Charge option has definitely helped this build out. One Book of Moon. One Dark Hole. And another part uh, of uh, an old strategy I wanted to bring back, one Dragon's Mirror. That pretty much gives away out of my extra deck that I do run five-headed dragon in here. The whole premise that I want to try out behind this is if a bunch of my E-Dragons uh, get stuck in the graveyard and I didn't want to use them yet, all I need is five dragons. Have two or more of each of these guys in the graveyard. Use them as the remove fire for uh, Dragon's Mirror. Get five head out and a potential two, three, maybe even all four searches if I somehow get all four in the graveyard. It's really good that if they somehow staff that uh, five head dragon, especially someone with, with a backfield card of their choice, I can reload my hand with a fresh batch of dragons and combo off that way. That is it for the spell lineup. On to the traps. Two dragon carnations. I still highly recommend at least trying this out once in your Dragon Builds. It is fantastic, uh, good MST bait, and gets uh, your Remove from Play Dragons back to your hand. And then for the 1 of slash General Defense, 1 Bottomless, 1 Torrential, and 1 Compulse. That's it for the main deck, on to the extra deck, starting off with the Synchros. Still keeping this pretty standard. One Ally of Justice Cataster for the level 5. Vulcan the Divine Return Power for uh, level 6. My Goyo Garden has a home in my Anta Meta, and for more general builds, I like the Return Power just because of how much uh, that gets around besides Goyo. The Lone level 7, blow all your shit up. And for the level 8s, Stardust Dragon, Stardust Spark Dragon. One Scrap Dragon. The Lone Nine, Mistworm, Hail Return Power. For a level 10, Leo, uh, and this guy has put in his work already. Mainly because uh, Delta Flyer is a level 3 uh, tuner, and when during the times where I don't want to use that uh, level manipulation, this guy is an obvious tank to have on your side of the field. Very uh, well used. And for the times when I want to use the level manipulation for the E-Dragon and uh, push game, Star Eater. Then for the Exceeds lineup, plenty of options of going into rank 4s from time to time and recyclability, so I have one Digestal Emerald. And since I do run the rank 7s uh, with my E-Dragons, Kept it simple, one big guy, one Drago sack. For the rank 8s, again, uh, cut this down a little bit as well since you can't go into rank 8s as much with this build. So I decided to use one Divine Dragon Knight Felgrand. And for a little effect monster stopping, uh, one Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon. And then to round things up with the extra deck, one five-headed dragon, and if they don't somehow stop this, this guy is pretty difficult to get around. As for how well this build is testing, I'm actually pretty surprised about it. Took it to my uh, locals not too uh, long ago and tested against uh, Bujins, Constellers, even the Burn in the Abyss build, and... I am uh, very, very pleased uh, at how well they held up against all those builds winning 2 out of 3. It's not quite at that competitive stage yet, but like I said, with the way the game's evolving more into more of a light and dark special summon set again, it's uh, good to try out new strategies for dragons, especially with all the anti-special summoning that uh, need to get the beaters back on the field. Figure to try to further evolve dragons. 
and uh, see how they stack up in the game today. Well, anyways, that is my uh, Toolbox Dragon deck profile. Hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, comment, rate, and subscribe. And until next time.